Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. This year, it seems like everyone's been talking about the new cubing innovation that is magnetic levitation, or maglev. It started with a couple of 3x3s that have already both been my main, and then quickly moved on to the pyraminks, which I have a feeling is far from the end of mass-produced maglev puzzles. But today, we're going to be getting a step ahead of these mass-produced puzzles by creating a fully custom maglev cube. Over the last few weeks, I've been getting a lot more into practicing square one, and let's just say I'd really like an upgrade over my old X-Man Volt. So today, rather than just upgrading my existing main with custom maglev, I'm instead just going to be starting from scratch with the best square one money can buy and hopefully making it even better. But before we get to that, I want to really quickly answer the question that's on everyone's mind. What is even the point of maglev? If repelling magnets do the same thing that springs do, then why even have magnets in the first place? Let me answer that by showing you two identical puzzles, the new Moyu Weilong Pyraminx. The only difference is that this one has maglev and this one does not. I'm going to start by doing a single hard flick on each of them. As you can see, the non-maglev version easily does about a turn and a half. Sometimes you can get it to do up to two turns. Compare that to the maglev version, where a single hard flick will very easily get you two turns, and a lot of times, you can get a full three turns, as you just saw there. Keep in mind that both these pyraminxes are on the same magnet strength, the same tensions, and are lubed identically. The difference becomes even more apparent if you just try and turn them normally. This one feels, frankly, uncontrollably fast, whereas this one just feels like a regular old pyraminx, nice and controllable. Now this little experiment goes to show two things. One, adding maglev undisputably makes your cube faster with more of a frictionless feel, and two, sometimes you don't want a fast frictionless cube. In this case, I strongly prefer the non-maglev version. Now I think that's because pyraminx just happens to be a very difficult puzzle to control in the first place, so speeding it up doesn't help, whereas on a 3x3 that's much easier to control, getting rid of some of that friction and adding a little speed boost makes it a lot more pleasant. Now that's all to say that if you want your cube to be faster and more frictionless, then adding maglev will certainly accomplish that. That's why I think square one is such a good candidate, because you're moving this slice layer back and forth constantly, you have a really good grip on it, so controllability isn't a huge concern, and so basically you just want to make it as fast as possible. That's where the maglev comes in. So let's finally break my new square one out of its package, the YJMGC. From everything that I've heard, this is the current best square one on the market, so it should be a very good puzzle to begin with. I've also had a lot of luck with MGC puzzles so far. Their 4x4, 5x5, and 6x6 are amazing, so let's try it out. It does have a very slight frosted texture to it, which isn't my favorite, but I guess we'll have to live with it. And, huh, there seems to be a very weird catching issue right here. It doesn't really seem to happen on any of the other pieces, so it's probably just one of these edges or corners right here. I'll have to investigate later. But yeah, other than that little problem that we can hopefully fix, the turning on it seems pretty great. I'll wait to give my full opinion until later in the video, after I've done a couple solves. But the first order of business, before we even get to the maglev, is right here inside this accessory box. That is, the black pieces. If you don't know, most top square one solvers actually replace the yellow on their square one with black. The reason for that is pretty obvious. You spend the first half of the solve basically sorting out white pieces from yellow pieces, so it doesn't really make sense that you're using two colors with such little contrast. Instead, just replace the yellow pieces with black, and there you go. It's really obvious to tell the difference between top and bottom. Now, I've never actually used a black and white square one, but I figure if everyone else is doing it, then it's probably pretty good. So let's go ahead and pop off these yellow caps and put the black ones on. All right, I not only swapped out these caps, but I also managed to fix that catching. It turns out that a few of these colored corner pieces have a bit of a sharp edge that was sticking out just a fraction of a millimeter, so I took the cap off and just shaved it down with a knife a little bit, and the catching is completely gone. I did one quick solve. The turning is great, and it definitely feels easier to tell apart those two colors with so much more contrast. Just as a comparison to the X-Man Volt, the corner cutting on this one is definitely better. You can cut straight down the middle of one of these big corner pieces in either direction, like this, whereas that's not at all possible on the Volt. Also on this cube, the top and bottom layers are very slow with relatively weak magnets, whereas on this cube, the top and bottom layers are much faster and with slightly stronger magnets, a combination that I definitely prefer. Also also, I don't know how this is even possible, but they somehow managed to get the top and bottom layer magnets to only click when you're doing a legal turn. So like right there it'll click, right there it'll click, but in the middle of this corner, there is no click. So if you're just doing precise little flicks like this, you'll always skip right over those impossible moves, going straight to the move that you actually intended, which is so cool that it frankly feels kind of like cheating. Overall, let's just say that this cube was more better than I expected. The only downside that I can find out of the box is that this slice layer is noticeably slower than on the X-Man, which makes this cube the perfect candidate for maglev. Now let me say up front that I am not the first person to make a maglev square one. In fact, I actually came across the idea while watching some great square one tutorials from a YouTuber named Cubemaster. I'll link his channel below. He made a video all about adding maglev to an MGC square one, which I'll also link below. Basically, he used a couple magnets from a maglev upgrade kit for a MoU 3x3 and cut out some of the plastic to make them fit inside of there. Now, he offered the alternative of simply buying some smaller ring magnets that would fit in this hole, but unfortunately, it was really hard to find those online. I did find one website that sold them in the UK, and surprisingly, the shipping was actually pretty reasonable and pretty fast. So I ended up with these 10 magnets shipped to the US for under $10 in about a week. Not too bad. Now, I guess the first step of maglevifying this cube is to unscrew this screw. So let's use the included screwdriver and see what happens. Okay. 
Okay, so just like usual, we have a screw, a spring, and a washer. And because it's a square one, it happens to be a very long screw, and it has a plastic nut on the opposite side. So let's set this cube down, hopefully without it falling apart, remove everything from the screw, and replace it with two opposing magnets. So I stuck one magnet onto there in one direction. Now let's grab another magnet from the opposite direction and stick that on there as well. And now they should repel each other, just like that. I'm a little bit worried that these magnets won't be strong enough because they are pretty small compared to what you'd normally use with maglev, and the original spring did seem pretty stiff, but let's go ahead and stick it back on here and try it out. So I guess we just have to screw it on like normal back onto the nut. Okay, now because the magnets take up a lot more room down there than the spring did, you won't be able to screw it in quite as far, but I don't think it's a big deal. I'm pretty sure that's far enough to not come out. Actually, the strength of the springiness feels pretty similar. I definitely don't think they're too weak anymore. So let's try it out. And oh boy, that is definitely less friction than it was before. Yeah, I would say that's just about the same level of speed and frictionlessness that you get originally in the X-Men Volt Square one. Of course, the two puzzles are designed a little bit differently, so this one started out a little bit stiffer, but I think this cube is at a point where I really like it now. Of course, there is one more thing we have to fix before we put the caps back on. That is just doing this so that white is on top. There we go. That looks a thousand times better. And now I guess it's just time to try out this square one with a couple solves so I can give you my final thoughts on it. Overall, I would say that I love how this square one turned out. I'm already enjoying solving on it a whole lot more than I was in my X-Man Volt. As for how much of that was the new cube versus the maglev, well, let's just say that the $21 cube was probably a much better value purchase than the $10 magnets. Still, the difference is certainly noticeable, and in my opinion makes for, at the very least, a slightly more satisfying solving experience. It might even make you a tiny bit faster. Apart from just reducing friction, as I've also mentioned before, maglev also has a subtly different feel to its springiness. Basically, as you pull further away, it pushes back on you harder, which can create a slightly more cushion feel as you're turning aggressively, which I can sort of tune into on this cube. Also, I didn't use this cube long enough normally to know if there's ever any spring noise, but for what it's worth, there won't be any of that with maglev. Now, of course, the only thing that will significantly improve your square one times in the long term is, well, practicing more square one, which I have been doing a lot more recently than ever before. Hopefully it shows in these solves. Now, of course, as with learning anything new, my recognition is pretty slow to begin with, but I like to think that my solutions and my turning are a whole lot more efficient than they were before. Anyway, yeah, this is my new square one main. It's still going to take a lot of time to break it in and lube it, and most of all, just get used to the faster turning, but I hope you all enjoyed the video trying out a new cube and messing around with some maglev because that's pretty much it and i'll see you guys next time